Hey, Coach LaRue. What's up, Stinky? It's time for sports. <laughs> Well, Stinky Shoe and Coach LaRue Coming your way with action, ooh You'll learn to play and have fun, too With Stinky Shoe and Coach LaRue We kick, we slide, we run, we score We'll give you skills you didn't have before Take what you learn and go outside And try them out because it's practice time Well, Stinky Shoe and Coach LaRue in your way, get ready to play. Work on your skills day by day. With Stinky Shoe and Coach the Rule. With Stinky Shoe and Coach the Rule. With Stinky Shoe and Coach the Rule. <laughs> Hi, kids. I'm Stinky Shoe here with Coach LaRue. Coach? Coach? Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the cows. Buy me some peacocks and big fat yaks. I don't care if the pigs all attack. What are you singing? It's Take Me Out with the Crowd, not cows. Stinky, I grew up on a farm. You show me fields, I'll show you cows. And it's peanuts and cracker jack. Oh, can't eat peanuts. I'm allergic. <laughs> Head swells up. Ooh, I look like a blimp with a crew cut. <laughs> Well, I hope you know more about baseball than you do about baseball songs. I sure do. See? I brought my old trusty fly swatter to catch all those flies in the outfield. Because where there's cows, there's flies. <laughs> Not that kind of fly, Coach. Fly balls! You know, the kind baseball players hit all over the outfield. The kind outfielders catch with a mitt. Oh, those kind of flies. Well, why didn't you say so, Stinky? I would have brought my glove instead. Hey, LaRue, look who's coming. Hi, Coach Jack. You any relation to that Cracker Jack fellow in the song? Nice job, Kyle. Way to keep your head in there. Nice swing. Always keep the ball in front of you. Good, now throw it across the first. Good throw! Hey, nice job. Now use both hands when you catch it so you don't drop it. Good. Thank you. Looked like you guys were having fun out there. Yeah! All right, good. Well, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have fun. We're going to learn the fundamentals of baseball. You look like a group of future major leaguers. <laughs> Ready to get started? Yeah! Good. Well, now, some of you have played baseball before, and to others, this is all going to be completely new. So we're going to start at the beginning. And remember, you guys, it's not just about winning. Learn the basics of the game, follow the rules, listen to your coach, be good sports, and have fun, right? Right! All right. Hey, LaRue, it's time to play ball! Not yet, Stinky. First things first. What's the first thing you did this morning, and what's the first thing we always do before anyone takes the field? Warm-ups. Very good, Abby. And that includes the batter. Everyone needs to be warmed up. Couple minutes, we're gonna be hitting some baseballs. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, but first, what equipment do you need to play baseball? 
a bat, a ball, and a glove. Very good. And you want to wear long pants, especially if you're going to slide. You want to wear a baseball cap. It helps keep the sun out of your eyes. And you always want to wear a protective helmet when you're in the batter's box, right? Right. Great. Now, some of you guys have brand new gloves. New gloves need to be broken in. It helps to catch the ball easier. Zach, didn't your dad have a way to help you break in a glove? Yeah. You put the ball in your glove, tie a string around it, and then leave it for a few days. Then you untie the string and take out the ball, and you have a nice soft pocket. Kind of like all of us breaking into baseball. Right, Coach? Okay, let's get into the basics of hitting. Kyle, why don't you show us your stance in the box and we'll get into some hitting skills. Hey coach, where exactly is the batter's box? We see home plate there, Abby? Yeah coach, it's right there. The batter's boxes are these chalked rectangular boxes on each side of home plate. The batters have to stand in the box when they're ready to hit the ball. Kyle, why don't you show us your stance? Good. And of course, if you're hitting left-handed, you stand on this side of the plate, right? Okay, now good hitters swing with one fluid motion. However, there are four separate techniques that go into hitting. I'm talking about your grip on the bat, your stance in the box, your stride as the ball approaches, and your swing as you hit the ball. Okay, let's start with the grip. Kyle, why don't you show us your grip? Okay, I see Kyle is gripping the bat with the palms of his hands. Now what you really want to do is grip the bat with your fingers, not the palms. Kind of like that. See how he's got like that? All right. You hold the bat nice and loose, and then when you get ready to swing, you grip it nice and tight. Okay, Brandon, you want to show us a proper stance in the batter's box? Now keep in mind, Every player's stance is not going to be the same in the batter's box. Your stance should be like a comfortable pair of shoes. It should feel right to you. And is there anything more wonderful than a comfortable shoe? I have a nice pair of fuzzy bunny slippers. My mommy lets me wear them before Betty by time. <laughs> hey, uh, I didn't just say that out loud, did I? Say what, LaRue? Oh, uh, nothing. Bunny slippers! <laughs> First, the player has a comfortable stance in the box, and his body is square to the pitcher's mound, like Brandon here. Good. Now, you see this, this chalked line at the back of the box? Yeah! <laughs> Your back foot should be in line with that chalked line, or parallel to it. That's called parallel to the back of the box. Your front foot should be in line with the front line of the box, or parallel to it. And then your toes should be pointed toward the plate. Then you bend your knees, like Brandon's doing, and that keeps the weight on the balls of your feet. Okay, now place a little bit more of your weight on your back foot than on your front foot. This allows you to step into the pitch as you swing. Now with your upper body bent a little bit forward at the waist, you watch the ball all the way into the plate. Look it all the way into the plate. Let's talk about bat position. As a rule, hold your bat at this kind of an angle. See the position of the bat in Chelsea's hands? That's a 45 degree angle. That's the position you should work on holding. Keep your elbows out from your body and flexed but relaxed. Now let's check your position in the batter's box. You want to be far enough away from the plate so that your bat can still reach just outside the plate when your arms are stretched straight out. Standing too far from the plate won't let your bat reach balls that are pitched on the outside corner of the plate. Here's a good trick. Reach out and try to touch the opposite side of home plate. If you can touch it comfortably, then you're in the right place. So we all know how to hold the bat properly and stand in the box, but what do we do as the ball comes toward the plate? Swing for the fences, coach! Without the right approach, Stinky, you're probably more likely to strike out than hit a home run. Let's talk about the stride. 
As the pitch comes to the plate, the hitter starts his swing by rotating the front shoulder, hip, and knee inward. We call this the trigger motion. It's a small rotation and it causes the hands to move a few inches outward. Next, the hitter rotates his hips toward the pitcher. The hip rotation causes a player's weight to move over their front foot and down into their front foot and toe. In fact, the old baseball saying goes, bury the toe and put on a show. <laughs> bury the toe. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Hey! Who turned out the lights? It's an eclipse! <laughs> Now to have a powerful swing, you don't really have to stride into the ball. Just rotate your hips, shift your weight to your front foot, and you'll be on your way to a base hit. But first it's time to swing the bat. Our legs and hips begin the swing. As you shift the weight to your front foot, your back foot pivots and the back knee rotates. At the same time, your weight shifts from back foot to front foot. Keep your front foot straight and firm. Your shoulders should be open, your hands come down and through. The barrel of the bat should be kept level with your hands or slightly above them during the swing. Your lead elbow should be pointed toward the ground and your head shouldn't move during the swing. So, who wants to show me what we just learned? Me, 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 me. Zach, why don't you grab your bat, step up to the plate and show us your swing. Baseball has a few rules. Some of them aren't very different than those your parents teach you, like being on time for meals. In baseball, that means arriving to the field on time, usually 20 minutes before each game. Those 20 minutes are important because it allows you to warm up as a team, taking part in hitting and fielding drills. So never keep your team waiting. Getting to the game too late could mean your team forfeits. That's a loss for your team. Plus, nobody gets to play when a game is forfeited. That's no fun for anybody, right? No. Now that we all know how to hit, let's talk about some of the basics of the game. Baseball's a pretty simple game. Easy to learn, a lot of fun. You hit the ball, hoping the team you're playing against doesn't catch it. Once you hit the ball, take off running for first base. If the ball isn't caught by your opponent and you get to first base before the ball, congratulations, you're safe. You can keep on running to second base, third base, even to home plate, as long as the ball doesn't beat you to the base. Because if it does, and you're tagged, then you're out. That's it, coach? Well, not quite. There's a lot more to baseball, but we'll take it one step at a time. Let's say you have a teammate on first base. Each time a player is at bat, that base runner has a chance to move around the bases toward home plate. That's when your team scores a run. Here's a question for you guys. How many outs does the team at bat get each inning? Excellent! Each team at bat gets three outs before they take the field. Keep it up, you're learning fast. Remember, the best way to learn baseball is to play. So practice, organize that game with your friends, play the game, practice, and have fun. That's how you become a really good ball player. Practice makes perfect! Hey, that's my line, Stinky. Now, there are nine innings in a major league game. In most of the leagues you will play in, games are six innings. Games usually don't last more than an hour and a half. If there's a tie after six innings and there's time left, the game goes into extra innings. If the game is still tied after the first extra inning, then we go into a second extra inning. Extra innings are played until one team scores the lead run to go ahead without their opponent scoring to tie them in the same inning. That's when a team finally wins. But it's not just about winning. It's about being a good sport and being a good teammate. Win or lose, you always want to be good sports. That's what makes baseball fun. Right, guys? Right! All right. right, coach. High fives for everyone. Win or lose, we're good sports.
right, who's ready to work on fielding? Me! Good. Now there are usually nine players in the field. Let's start with the infield. Chelsea, I'm going to put you at first base. Uh, Sam, you play second base. Zach, you play third. Kyle, you play shortstop. That's halfway between second and third. Uh, now for the outfield. Abby, you take a right field. Uh, Brandon, I'm going to put you in center field. And Alyssa, you play left field. Okay, that's seven players in the field now, plus the pitcher and the catcher makes nine. Coach, uh, what about pinch hitter? Can I pinch hit? <laughs> Pay attention! Coach Jack is talking fielding, not hitting! <laughs> okay, I'm going to hit the ball a few different ways to show you how a batter can make an out. I'm going to hit one straight up in the air near the infield. That's a pop-up! Use both hands to catch a pop-up. Nice catch. You catch a pop-up, that's an out. Okay, you ready? I'm going to hit a ground ball to shortstop. The shortstop will field the ball, throw it to the second baseman, second baseman, tag the bag, and throw it to first. Chelsea, keep your foot on the bag and receive the ball. You ready? Here it comes. Glove down, square to the ball. Nice. Nice one. Great teamwork, you guys. Now, if there's a runner on first, what do you as fielders have to do? Stop the runner from getting safely to second base? That's right. Now how do you do that if the batter hits a ground ball? By throwing the ball to second base before the runner gets there. Very good. That's called a force out. If the ball beats the runner to the base, the runner's out. Now, on that last play, not only did you get the force out at second, but by making the throw from second to first and beating the runner, you got a second out. That's a double play. A double play is two outs. And two is better than one. Right, partner? Easy, LaRue. Remember, there's only one of me. Ever since my brother Smelly ran off to be a tennis star. All right, now I'm going to hit a line drive. Heads up at third. If you catch it, it's a line out. Remember, glove up, catch it with both hands. Nice stop at third. That was a line out. There's something else to remember when you're running the bases, you guys. If the ball is hit in the air and caught, like a line out or a pop up, you have to run back to your original base so you can be thrown out. Okay, outfielders, heads up. I'm going to hit one out to you. Remember, both hands. Nice catch in the outfield. The batter's out. Now, you guys, if there are runners on base and a fly ball is hit like that, what do you tell the runners to do? Get back to your base! Perfect. If the runner can't get back to the base before the ball gets there, the runner is out. When a fly ball is hit into the outfield, position yourself halfway between first and second or second and third. That way, if the ball is caught, you can get back to your base safely. You don't want to get caught in a rundown. I won't even show you the next way a batter can make an out because he doesn't hit the ball. Can anyone tell me how a batter can make an out without hitting the ball? That's a strikeout, coach. Right you are. When a batter takes three swings at the ball or three strikes and misses, that's a strikeout. The umpire can also call a batter out if he doesn't swing at a third strike. So keep your eyes wide open at the plate and follow that ball all the way in. Cause it's, Cause it's one, one, two, two three, three strikes, strikes you're out at the old ball game. <laughs> <laughs> the more you practice and watch others play, the better you'll play. That's the best way to learn the rules of the game, by playing the game. And once you know all the rules, the game becomes even more fun. Why is Coach Lou putting on catching gear? Luke, I'm your father. <laughs> It does look like catcher's gear, doesn't it? But it's really umpire's gear. Since they stand behind the catcher, they need protection too. Oh, so Coach LaRue is going to be our umpire. Yes, he is, and he's getting ready right now. Like I said, the umpire is the person who will be behind the plate, crouching right behind the catcher. He'll call the balls and strikes, or whether a hit is fair or foul, meaning it's outside the foul lines. The umpire will also say whether a base runner is safe or out. 
There's often another umpire on the field, but the home plate umpire makes the final call. Ball or strike, safe or out. How can the umpire tell if the pitch is a ball? If a pitcher throws a ball outside or inside of home plate, below the knees or above the jersey letters of the hitter, that's called a ball. If the umpire calls four balls, the batter gets to walk to first base. That's why it's called a walk. Hey, Stinky, want to take a walk? I don't think I should leave practice, but a nice stroll through the park. Ooh, that can be invigorating. Not that kind of walk, Stinky. Oh, well, let's test their wheels on the base path with some base running, coach. Being a good base runner doesn't necessarily mean just being fast. It also means being smart on the base paths, and that takes practice. First of all, the base runner needs to know where the ball is at all times, where it'll be thrown, and how many outs there are. Otherwise, the runner will be out. Okay, Zach, I want you to be the runner at first base, and Abby's at the plate. Say Abby hits a grounder to shortstop. What do you do? Run to second base. Exactly. Abby's running to first when she hits the ball, so on a ground ball, you have to take off for second base. Now, how about if Abby hits a pop-up or a fly ball? Then I stay on base. Yes, but if the fielder drops the ball, then you run to the next base. So I can't run if the ball is caught? Actually, you can run after the ball is caught. That's called tagging up. But be careful. If you're not paying attention and run too slow, or the fielder is close to the next base and gets the ball there before you do, then you could be tagged out. Sometimes it's best to play it safe and stay on your base on a fly out, line out, or pop up. Here's a tricky one. If you're on base with two outs and the ball is hit, what do you always do? Run to the next base. Great answer. Fly ball or ground ball, base runners always run to the next base with two outs. Because if the ball is caught, the inning's over anyway. If the ball's hit, you could score a run. Now, what if there's a runner on second, a runner's on second and third base, and a ground ball is hit on the infield? Run to the next base? Maybe. It all depends. But first, watch the ball. Think about where the fielder will throw it. Think about if you'll have enough time to get to the next base without being thrown out. Otherwise, stay put. So, if we have runners at second and third, and we see the throw is going to first base, we can run? It all depends. Just make sure the ball's being thrown away from you. And wait to see that the ball is actually thrown before leaving the base you're on. If it's too risky, just stay on your base and let the next batter try to move you ahead with a hit. <laughs> I think I'll just stay put for now. <sighs> That's no fun, coach. Yeah, but at least it's safe. <laughs> Now that we've covered hitting and base running, let's learn a few things about throwing the ball. Throwing is obviously one of the most important things in baseball. Getting the ball to where it's going on target is more important than speed, right? Right! <laughs> Woo! I've had some wild pitches in my life. Don't worry, Stinky. I didn't listen to a one of them. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the overhand throw. Everybody have a ball in their throwing hand? Good. Now make a grip using the index finger and the middle finger spaced apart on top of the ball just like that. Take the thumb and center it up underneath right between the two fingers like that. Now grip the ball tightly. Good. Now for the wind up. Bring your throwing arm back and up. Turn your body so your front shoulder is pointed at the target. Your weight should be on the back foot. Point your glove hand toward your target, just like your front shoulder. Extend your throwing arm behind the body, like this. Now with your wrist cocked and elbow bent, it's time to throw the ball. As you start your throw, pick up your lead foot and step toward the target. This will help you keep your throw straight and accurate. Your lead foot will begin to touch the ground as your hips turn. The throwing side hip should drive toward the target. This gives more strength to your throw. A 
Hello, Coach. Uh, this isn't Hula Hoop we're learning here, uh, is it? <laughs> Just working on being hip. Yeah. During the throw, we move our weight from back foot to front foot. At the same time, the throwing arm comes forward just before releasing the ball. And don't forget, always keep your eyes on the target. The last thing we want to work on is our follow through. That's actually finishing the throw. Point the throwing hand at the target and swing the back leg around. Let your throwing arm come all the way down in front of the body. Your feet should end up almost centered under you for good balance. And so you're ready to react quickly to whatever happens next on the field. practice everyone great work everybody very nice very nice now remember you guys to practice what we've been working on here today hitting fielding base running throwing right, right. okay yeah keep up the good work just like today pay attention to what's going on around you you'll be better baseball players for the effort and remember what our old friend coach LaRue likes to say practice makes perfect right so right. keep it up not just in baseball, in everything you do in life. It's the only way you're ever going to succeed, right? Right! All right. Hands in. Okay. Swiggy! All right! Woo! All right, coach. Give me five for a job. Well done. Uh, I will. Uh, just as soon as you take a shower, Stinky. Woo! My eyes are burning, kid. <laughs> you're starting to draw flies. Good thing I brought my fly swatter. Nice hit, Lizzo. Practice makes perfect! <laughs> well, Stinky Shoe and Coach LaRue Keep working hard and have fun, too We'll see you again in practice soon Well, Stinky Shoe and Coach LaRue Well, Stinky Shoe and Coach LaRue Well, Stinky Shoe and Coach LaRue well,